are very happy to welcome uh, Gaspar uh, Rasto, um, who is from the Slovenian Commission um, uh, of the UNESCO. And Gaspar has been um, in the last 20 years dedicating a lot of time, uh, and specifically in the last eight years, to OER. So join me uh, with a warm welcome to Gaspar, who's going to talk to us today the UNESCO recommendation on OER. Go badis. Gaspar, the floor is yours. Thank you. Once again, once again, <laughs> thank you, Sahira, and uh, also a very warm welcome to all of you. Um, some of you, and I have checked just uh, briefly the list of participants, I see many uh, familiar faces. Uh, I have not recognized in one second everybody, but I see Barbara, I see Colin, I see Ebba, I see Juran, of course, uh, and uh, Vanessa, and um, all of you, uh, nice to see you again. Um, we followed together the process of the UNESCO OER recommendation during, as uh, Sahira, you just said, uh, during the last possibly really eight years, probably even more. Um, because um, just as a short introduction for also, especially for those whom uh, you do not know me yet, um, as you introduced myself, I am Gaspar from the Slovenian National Commission. I am um, Secretary General of this commission, a working body of the Slovenian government in order to uh, arrange all uh, activities and policies among the UNESCO organization itself and the Slovenian government and the Slovenian national policies, the Slovenian um, field uh, 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 where we have to implement all UNESCO policies. So OER, as you can imagine, I am from a very untypical background for this field. Um, from my background, I am lawyer and um, I have studied international relations. However, I occupied with UNESCO affairs for at least half of my life. Uh, and as you can see, I'm not as young anymore. Uh, so it's a long time. And so I know UNESCO as such very well. Um, however, and as a very starting point, and still, and Colin will probably laugh now, uh, um, I'm neither an OER expert, I'm no expert in digital affairs. Um, so uh, in this affairs, I do not know anything, but the field of open education uh, is very important for me also uh, privately and personally. And that's why we became familiar with some colleagues from Slovenia uh, already more than eight years ago, as you said, uh, who started to work on the effort to establish a UNESCO chair in the field of OER. And these colleagues uh, became my friends in the meanwhile, very good friends, and uh, they succeeded in establishing this chair um, uh, in 2014 already. So it's long ago, seven years ago. And with those colleagues, we came also in contact, of course, with UNESCO uh, experts and UNESCO, the UNESCO secretariat. And as they recognized that Slovenia is quite active in, in this field, um, we, we were becoming some, somehow uh, trying to really develop and to further UNESCO's efforts in the field of OER. As you are aware, UNESCO organized a World OER Congress in, in the year of 2012. So uh, it's nine years ago already. And um, that was a beginning of a starting point to enhance and to uh, really strengthen the international collaboration in the field of OER. And especially UNESCO was the organization, it was the framework where the word and the, the, the diction of open educational resources was specifically coined uh, in already in 2002, as if I remember already. So, um, and this this is as a as a background. And as you said, okay, yes, of course, um, we were very much engaged and involved in the overall process, because after 2012, UNESCO did not stop. Uh, so, 
my starting or our starting point was this OER chair, but then also to support UNESCO in order to strengthen this, which I mentioned to the international collaboration in the field of OER, how to mainstream the international collaboration in the field of OER. This was the goal of UNESCO itself and also of a big part of the international community. And that was the goal also, or then the, 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 the overall objective that UNESCO with its member states tried to, or was working on to produce a standard setting in a global standard setting instrument in the field of open educational resources, which could give a framework for this mentioned international cooperation. Um, I don't want now to speak too much about the past because uh, this is not the goal what, what we have now. And I, I have a given time frame also, also for this, not only key, keynote, but I would like also to engage uh, all of you who are, who are prepared now to listen to me and then probably also to actively engage yourself in, in some discussion is that you know, uh, I would like to name it, and uh, we all know that this UNESCO OER recommendation was then finally adopted in, in November 2019. Now it's two years ago at the UNESCO General Conference. And for me and for many, it's a, I don't know, I would call it a an exciting, exciting major, I don't know, milestone for open education itself. Because as this recommendation, it was a really a strong effort to, to adopt this uh, recommendation. It was a not only four-year process, uh, which was formally the, the given time frame, but uh, we from Slovenia, we know that we organized an in the, the second World OER Congress in Ljubljana in Slovenia in 2017, five years after the, fir uh, the first one. And this was uh, then also a, a starting point for the drafting process, which took already place at this time and which had to be then finalized until until end of 2019. And it was a huge effort. As, as many of you know, uh, there were big discussions about the text itself. There were big also political issues among regional uh, uh, groups and countries also that uh, that put in their, their strong um, views about about def definitions about about also uh, 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 possible actions etc so it was not easy to adopt this and and we we know about this very much especially in, in, in our place and therefore I say it's it's an exciting uh, exciting milestone although probably not everybody was or is satisfied with the text itself because it has okay all of his problems uh, as as every uh, 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 adopted international instrument or text uh, has of course because it's a uh, uh, arrangement about i mean you know uh, among 193 member states of unesco uh, so uh, uh, it's a uh, really a, a compromise which is on the table 2 years now and and what happened or what is happening is that that as a as a, a given task is that the implementation of such a such a kind of a scale of 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 text which is um, giving I don't know uh, uh, recommendations and ideas and. Uh, action areas for member states, for governments especially, but of course through them then to the to the field of experts and, and those and uh, who are who are working, for example, with open educational resources, who are using them, who are preparing them and who are who are changing them. And and this is a big undertaking. I mean the, the, the implementation is a big undertaking. And as you know, a recommendation is a standard setting instrument, but it's not really legally legally binding um, so member states of unesco are not forced to make use of this recommendation they can follow these recommendations but they are not uh, necessarily forced to do so but after the rules of procedure of unesco they are obliged to report to unesco every four years about the implementation in their specific 
countries. So therefore, I mean, there is some pressure also uh, uh, given from, from this, this uh, part. Um, the recommendation itself, it was built upon, um, I mean, I, I, once again, I would like to stress that this is the only, the only international standard setting instrument in this, in this field. It facilitates international cooperation and it has built upon five, namely five areas of, of action, as I remember. It's, I, I, can, I, I, I will read them out because they are important for, for, the, uh, for the actions to, to be built by, by uh, member states. It's first, it's the building of the capacity of stakeholders to create, access, reuse, adapt, and redistribute OERs. It's secondly, the developing of supportive policies for OER. It's thirdly, the encouragement of inclusive and equitable quality of OER. It's fourthly, the nurturing of the creation of sustainability models for OER. And it's fifth, the promotion and the reinforcement of international cooperation itself. So that's the five uh, areas of action. And what has happened was for me also personally, I told you that I, I am used to work for and with UNESCO for at least two and a half decades. Uh, and therefore it was for me a big, big surprise. And I'm somehow a little also proud, I can say um, that we, not only we from Slovenia, but some also other colleagues and other member states convinced the UNESCO Secretariat to work in the framework of the ad adoption process and the uh, preparation process of this recommendation to work really inclusively and openly. Um, I have not exper experienced such an approach before at other recommendations or at other standard-setting instruments in the framework of UNESCO. Um, because here it was like, okay, it was a pre-COVID uh, timing, of course. So here all regions of the world have been and were involved. Um, five or six regional preparatory consultation meetings happened in, in six regions of the world, uh, bringing together experts, especially experts from the field, not really minorly uh, representatives from governments. So really uh, experts from the field, so it, uh, teachers or students, etc., and bring them together in order to prepare their lists, to identify their lists of recommendations for their specific area, because OER is, as we can imagine, and as we know, is uh, specifically different, uh, 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 adopted in, in different parts of the world, of course. And this approach was great. Uh, then, of course, the success of the World OER Congress, which was also very much inclusively uh, organized, not only bringing together 500 people uh, from all over the world uh, as a intergovernmental congress, but also involving people then online also at this timing. <clears throat> and then the last phase of the consultations, bringing together people in the, uh, in the intergovernmental uh, last final consultation meeting before the adoption to, to adopt and to prepare the final, the final text of the recommendation. So this process, okay, they, uh, it took four years. It took four years, but it, uh, it was really a great success of the organization itself. What we have then experienced during the adoption itself, um, because already through uh, during the adoption um, and when the text was adopted, the recommendation was ad adopted, um, one initiative has been claimed and proposed to member states and announced. Um, already how to implement implement this text of the re recommendation. This was already proposed at the time being of the general conference. Um, and this was then uh, also originally and then formally 
launched in March of 2020, so only four months after the adoption. It was a so-called, the, the, the launch of a so-called international or global dynamic coalition for the implementation of the recommendation. And this kind of work um, led by the UNESCO Secretariat, but uh, involving stakeholders, uh, a high number of stakeholders um, to work in this uh, coalition. This is a I mean, it's a new approach. It's a very, very new approach and it's successful because I can tell you before I then turn over to the questions which could arise, uh, uh, what is then the purpose of the of my question in the beginning, the Kuo Vadis uh, for the recommendation is that, that um, such a, you know, somehow formalized dynamic coalition. Okay, it's there's no formal membership. Member states do not need to sign a uh, membership contract or so for, for this coalition. But um, it's, it's a framework, a framework and a pool for stakeholders from representatives from the Secretariat at UNESCO, from uh, UNESCO member states, from international governmental organizations, from two uh, international non-governmental organizations, category two centers from UNESCO, specialized institutions, universities, schools, uh, experts, um, civil society, and also the private sector. Um, so it's it's uh, really a big pool of of uh, stakeholders who work together in this in this dynamic coalition and. Um, I know some of you, I mean, Colin and, and others who, of course, actively and, and uh, very with good, uh, big engagement work in this, in this dynamic coalition because it's, it's uh, separated in different fields of, of interest. So there are committees, program committees who are uh, really then uh, uh, in, in specific ways working out um, areas of action for the implementation in in specific areas, but I can tell you, it's a it's a huge, and I will send you f uh, later a, a link to this to this coalition that you can check because everybody can become a member of this coalition. So you need not to become or uh, to be a representative from a government. You can be uh, from the private sector, a teacher or a university professor or anybody else who could join namely by person uh, this this uh, global dynamic coalition and before i i would like to conclude and to ask then my question uh, or my questions is that such a dynamic coalition and which which also now proved to be a i don't know um a possible uh, example of best practices or, or good practices for other recommendations. Um, at this, in, in, in this November, UNESCO adopted the so-called um, recommendation on the ethics of AI. And here UNESCO, the Secretariat, thinks about a similar um, way, how to bring together interested and supportive member states to support the implementation of this recommendation. It will be called a little different, possibly, however, but it makes use out of this example of best practices. And before I, as I said, conclude is that, that this dynamic coalition on OER, on the implementation of OER, has already, of course, significant results of good, uh, of good uh, uh, examples what what is uh, uh, possible to be done in regard of the of the um, implementation and i can here count on for example this year in 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 summer in of course in the context of covid-19 which how shall i say which was uh, undermining education as such and and education and learning as such uh, across the 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 entire globe um, the, 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 the happened quite different and regionally different um, OER dynamic coalition webinars 
and which examined examined uh, the, for example, the sustainability and the how how appropriate could be OER production and the use of OER and probably then also funding models for OER in different regions of the world based on the problems and the challenges that we have in regard to the pandemic crisis. Or for example, a global study of experiences from Africa, Asia and Europe was prepared. And uh, of, of uh, I mean, in the field of OER policy development was prepared. Uh, and presented in a OER Dynamic Coalition webinar held last June, for example. So it's a few months ago only. Um, so this is, from my point of view, a this is this is what I wanted to stress that it's a great framework and a great opportunity. How, without and having in mind that this recommendation text is a legally non-binding uh, text for governments, but however, how how societies and uh, private people, institutions, learning institutions, uh, teaching institutions and users, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, can make use of this recommendation without waiting for a governmental decision. Without waiting for a governmental decision. However, I know from different cases and not only in, in, in Europe where I am from or in the EU, but also in, in, in developing countries, and uh, I know examples from quite a, a number of African countries where this recommendation already provoked also governmental efforts, for example, to develop OER policies, for example, in their respective countries where they do not exist until now. Um, so, Jahira, I promised to somehow finish in the framework of 25 minutes. I uh, have one or two minutes. I would like, if I see uh, the number of participants in this session, I would like to, first of all, <laughs> thank you first for, for listening to me. I told the organizers uh, of the event in the beginning that I will make use of no PowerPoint presentation, but that's on purpose. I hope it was not too difficult to listen to me. I hope it was um, nevertheless, uh, easy to find out that I am a friend of this recommendation personally and that I make promotion out of this and that I would like to stress on this and invite somehow that you make also promotion of this, not only because it's one framework of cooperation, but to promote this dynamic coalition because it's a great, great way how such a text can be implemented from also from the bottom up, not only vice versa. So thank you very much for your attention.